Well, seeing it's spring and we're all starting to do some spring cleaning after winter, I thought it would be an idea to do a little thing about uh, power washers. Now I know all our Land Rovers get muddy and dirty and a cold water washer usually suffices to get the mud off and I really recommend every time you've been off-road to wash your vehicle off otherwise it gets all clogged up underneath. The Land Rovers have got a built-in rust traps everywhere as you know on the chassis and stuff and an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure so I thought we'd do a chat about power washers because you see <clears throat> at this time of year I usually find a hell of a lot of power washers by the side of the road being dumped because they don't work after winter why don't they work after winter well a lot of these cold power washers get put into garages and sheds and stuff like this over winter and there's not really much of a facility to drain out the water therefore the pumps can crack now the cheaper the cheaper the power washer the cheaper the pumps going to be some of them can be in plastic aluminium very rare to see steel ones but I just used to pick them up and fix them to you know make one out of about five <laughs> and uh, I used to give them away now I don't know, nobody seems to want them anymore, so I don't even bother picking them up. Well, I do, I <laughs> throw them straight in the scrap. But um, I thought we'd do a little thing about uh, power washers. Now, just wait, wait a minute, because there's somebody here. Just a second. I'm not sure where we got up to. One of the things you've got to remember about power washers is the pump creates flow and the restriction creates the pressure. So... When you buy a really cheap power washer that's about £3,000, the restriction is caused by these number of adjustable jets here. I mean, you can probably see this one's kind of large and this one's kind of small, so you'll get high pressure. Now the problem is, if you change, interchange these jets on a £3,000 power washer, you're going to get reduced flow and I'm going to show you an experiment with mine Ooh, look, somebody shot me. I'm going to show you an experiment with mine in a minute and show you the difference now another thing about uh, power washers is how many gallons per minute, litres per minute it puts out because they can be deceiving you could get a power washer that's rated at doing I don't know three gallons per hour well maybe but under what pressure? See? So that's it. The, the manufacturers always seem to go for the maximum numbers. Maximum gallons per hour, maximum PSI. So, I want to show you my wand. Oh, my collection of wands down here. Now, I'm not sure if I can pick this up. My very first steam cleaner I was given, I had this wand here. And... I, when I bought my, what's it now, it's a H, HSD 750 Karsha that was used, um, I put this on because the other one didn't work or it was blocked or it was damaged. And I could never get this machine here. I could never get that machine to work. Where is it now? It's there. I could never get it up to pressure. It was, uh, or heat, because that's a steam cleaner. And I could never really get it up to heat. Um... Sorry, I'm moving the camera around all the time. I'm reaching over this table. The problem with it was the power washer was working great and the heating system was working great. Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't working. The heater wasn't working when I got it. I know it, was, I know it was actually running and it was sold as a, just as a cold water washer. I paid 900 bucks for it donkeys years ago. And all it was to fix it was the heater control switch, like the, the rear stat. That was it, 35 bucks, it was fixed. But, with this lance, I could not get up to any pressure. So, I changed the lance to this one here, this, this big one. Now this is one we're all familiar with. But the thing is about these um, lances, they come, the handles come separate. And this is great for doing up on the sides of buildings and things like this. But, I had this old nozzle on the end of here and it wasn't until I discovered that you could buy interchangeable nozzles that it changed the machine completely because I put a restrictive uh, nozzle in here 
that meant water was getting was backing up down the line and going slowly through the heating coil but at the same time it was getting higher pressure because of the restriction here brilliant now as I said you can buy these handles and the lance is separate and I'm going to show you a few lances but one of my favorites for washing off Land Rovers is this one there is a short stubby one I got from Prince's Auto and I put it in my uh, tube bender and bent it almost at 90 degrees this is brilliant for going under cars you know or if you're in engine bays you can get all over the place with that because you can get underneath manifolds and things you could do the same with this one as well but well, I couldn't see much of a point but that worked really really well so I bought this handle and put this onto here so now all I've got to do is these quick release couplings here so I don't have to mess about now one word of advice on Amazon and places like this they advertise lots of different ones and extensions and stuff like this here's one in particular this is one not to buy I bought it <laughs> should have known better shouldn't I it's a hose extension and you can keep on adding bits on and on and it's sort of like the safe for washing out gutters great idea eh? or is it? You see you can put a let's see let's a nozzle. we can put a, a nozzle in here like that that's locked in and then connect it to your pressure washer and wash out your gutters except these are on quick connect fittings they're all on quick connects so that means imagine you're doing a gutter what's happening is you've got pressure coming out of here and that'll, that'll go spinning round and round and round don't ask me how I know but <laughs> useless but good at the same time because if you get some pipe fitting you know some uh, pipe connectors and then connect it up and make it all solid then it'll work however trying to hold oh, wait a minute I'll have to stand back a bit for this or I won't be able to do it but try and hold this together you know what we got there eight feet ten feet on a three thousand pound wash you, you, you'll find it very very hard to manage so that's not really acceptable now another thing is if you're going to use a, a steam cleaner a hot water cleaner get ones with the plastic handles on here with the, the amount of pressure coming out of these uh, they can kick back kind of dramatically when you let go the you know pull the trigger uh, and especially this little this little chap here can sort of knock your teeth out it's, it's bashed me in the face a couple of times when I wasn't expecting it and you know and, and some people have borrowed my gear but it's good but the thing is with with a cold water washer which I didn't sort of like if you're cleaning off oil you've got to use some sort of a detergent either wash your engine down gearbox with geyser or gunk or whatever sort of product you can get hold of to break down the grease uh, you can on some washers put uh, a detergent in the line and it'll suck the detergent through and wash while you know do its job while you're washing that's okay but what I found out with a lot of cold water pressure washers it it will get the thick off but the the, the oily film tends to move from one side to another you're continuously moving it whereas a hot washer is worth its weight in gold if you can find one that's used and it needs a bit of tinkering around with you know they are really good they're a bit cumbersome but they're they're good because the heat breaks down the oil not only that the heat if you're doing an engine block for example you're washing out all the oilways and things like that the heat will build up in that block so much that it will dry instantly without rusting which is a good thing because what I do with them as soon as I see they're um, they're washed out and they're drying off instantly you know blow them down with an airline naturally to just to get any excess water out and then on the outside straight away with some black paint and it'll stick like feces to a hairy blanket that is a good thing now before we start to get our experiments and we get all wet one other thing which is this, these washers are really good for and this is why I've got this lance out is cleaning your 
cleaning your floor. Now, two years ago, I bought this little device. You can see how mucky it is and filthy. Um, it's a 15 inch surface cleaner. It was 150 bucks. It's all in stainless steel. And how it works is pressure goes from your lance through here and it spins this around and inside here there's two jets and it makes a fan as it goes around. You can see how much filth's on that. That is the best thing since sliced bread for cleaning your floor. Because it's like a 15 inch wash and also the clever design is here the wheels are behind here so that you can get right up to the edge of a wall and wash it off. And the nice thing is you don't use a lot of water. That's a good thing. You don't use a lot of water but if you want to paint your floor, let it dry out, there'll be no grease on it at all. You don't need a detergent with that. I had a hell of a job washing this floor down years ago. I, uh, I used to use this lance and the problem is when you're close to the floor you're only putting a band like this while well, you get streaks all over the place and you're pushing dirt from one side and pushing it to the other. With that thing there for 150 bucks I wish I bought it 10 years ago. So it was really worth it. So I think what we'll do, I won't put the heat on my machine but I'll do a demonstration somehow without getting my camera wet of uh, the different nozzles and what they will actually do. I was racking my brains to think of a demonstration for this uh, power wash and the difference in jet sizes. So what we've got, I'm going to just test three. I'm going to test this black one first, then this middle one, this green one, and then this red one. Now they are pretty universal standards for what they actually do. But first of all I'm going to put the black one into the lance and we're going to try and see how close we can get to the bucket to knock it over. This is going to be fun, isn't it? Right. Right, so this is the black nozzle. That wouldn't blow a fly off your carpet. Let's try the green one. Great success. Now we'll try the red one. As you can see, the, the smaller the jet, the more the pressure it's got. I think that was a good demo. I think we might just end it there. If you want to see some more things, um, I'll try and put them down because this video is getting kind of long, but I think that was the easiest way to show you the difference between nozzle, aperture, nozzle orifices and pressure because the pump has stayed the same. I've never adjusted it as you saw. It's the orifice. See ya.